QuickBooks Online, manage sales tax. Get ready to start moving on up with QuickBooks Online. We're gonna be using the free QuickBooks Online test drive, searching in a search engine for QuickBooks Online test drive, looking for the result that has Intuit.com within the URL, Intuit being the owner of QuickBooks. I'm gonna be using the United States version and verifying that we're not a robot. Zooming in a bit by holding down control up on the scroll wheel, currently at 125% on the zoom in. Remember that if I hit the cog drop down, we could switch between the business view and accountant view. I'm working in the accountant view. We'll try to toggle back and forth periodically to look at the differences between the views. We're gonna duplicate a couple tabs to put our major financial statement reports in as we do every time. Right click on the tab up top to duplicate it as it's thinking. Right click again and duplicate again. Back to the middle tab. And then we're going to go down to the reports, which is on the left hand side in the accounting view, and then choose the balance sheet. Tab to the right, back to the right tab, and go back to the reports. And this time we're going to choose the profit and loss. Scrolling up to the top to see where the date range is, I'm going to select the date range and do this as fast as possible in the data input, which is 010122, January 1st, 2022, tab to 12-31-22, December 31st, 22, and tab. It then adds the dashes and so on. Run the report to make sure it is up to date. Go back to the tab to the left, scrolling up. Same thing on the range. 010122, January 1st, 2022 to 12-31-22, December 31st, 2022. Let's run it. That's the setup process we do every time. And then I'm going to go back to the first tab where we'll actually be doing the navigation. So if I hit the plus button here, we've been thinking about the vendor cycle. The vendor cycle represents the people that uh, we are paying money going out at the end of the cycle for goods and services that we are purchasing. Now the sales tax is what we're going to be concentrating on here. And the reason I'm looking at it in the vendor cycle is because basically it's a money going out type of function. There's going to be money going out for the taxes. Taxes always complicate things. So we have our normal accounting process and then wherever we are located, whatever tax we are dealing with will complicate that process to some degree. Right, right now we're going to have like a usage tax, a sales tax. Sales tax in the United States is a tax that's a state and local tax as opposed to a federal tax, which actually makes it a little bit more difficult from the bookkeeping standpoint because then we need to know what the taxes are for a particular location. If you're just doing business in one particular location, then it's still pretty straightforward. But if you have multiple different locations, it could get quite complex quite quickly. So in the United States, usually the sales tax is going to be on goods and services that are going to go to the end uh, user. Uh, and it's a state and local tax, which will be picked or, uh, or have different taxes depending on the locality. There's kind of three things that we want to think about with regards to the sales tax to get it up and running and functioning within the system. Number one, turn on the sales tax and set up the sales tax based on the locations that were subject to the sales tax. Number two, we then have to set up the items, which are the things we sell, service items, but we're really focused mainly on inventory items because in the United States, those are the ones likely subject to the tax applying the tax rates to those items. So in other words, when we make a sale with, uh, which is over here in the customer area, this is why it gets a little bit confusing. We're gonna pay taxes at the end. That's why we're talking it in kind of like the vendor section, but we're gonna be collecting the taxes on the sales side of things. And we'll make sales with sales receipts or invoices, the forms used to create the sale. And those forms need to know uh, whether or not there's tax subject to it. And usually that will be done by us entering, you know, the item into the system, which will be subject to tax or not. So we'll take a look at that. And then three, we've got the customers, meaning you could have some customers that possibly are exempt from the tax, possibly because they're not the end user of the inventory. So even though the item normally, if going to someone else would be subject to tax, the customer may be not subject to tax also the customers uh, might have different taxation based on where they're located. So the system could change the rates if you have multiple tax rates you're subject to, 
based on the location of the customer. So those are the three things. We got to set up the tax. We got to put the put the uh, people that we're going to pay for the tax and whatnot, the rates and everything in. Then we got to look at the items, the things we're selling to drive whether or not someone's going to be taxed when we make a sale. And then we got to think about the customers to make sure that the tax is going to be applied to the proper location and if there's any exemptions to particular customers. Okay, so if I go down to uh, the left-hand side in the accounting view, we have the taxes uh, tab. And then we've got the taxes tab here. We've got sales tax and then we've got the 1099s. Now, notice here we've we've got the, the new item. So I'm going to go through this uh, get started process. I'll do it very quickly just for the defaults that are in here. We, we're going to go into this in more depth in the second half of the course when we start a new company file and we create the sales tax ourselves. But I'm just going to go through the get started here to get an idea of the process. So set up your sales tax center, double check your address to make sure it's right. Here's the address we have for you. We use your physical business address to calculate your sales tax rate. So it's a state and local tax in the United States by default, typically it's going to be based on our location. Now, again, that could, if we're selling to people and we're subject to other sales tax, it might also, we might change that by basically the address of who we're selling to or something like that, which could get, you know, fairly complex, but that's the default. So then a uh, bulk matching to apply multiple rates to an, to an agency, uh, select your rates, then select your agency. So the agency is who we're actually going to be paying here. So notice what we have set up down below. We've got multiple different rates, which are based basically on, you know, the locations. And if we're going to set up the rates from scratch, QuickBooks is getting better and better at knowing the rates for particular locations. So you can pick the location and QuickBooks will kind of automate uh, the rates based on that information, which is which can be quite nice. And so then we got to have the official agency. So I'm just going to select a random agency. So I've selected the California Department of Tax, the Arizona Department of Revenue and the Arizona Department of Revenue. These are just for the example purposes here. So you've got the rates, you've got your agency and then uh, the official agency name. I'm going to select next. So review your rates. Uh, here's what we're what we're bring over to your new sales tax center. So now we've got our rates. If we need to change them, we can go in, into this item here and then uh, make any updates to the rates. I'm going to go to the prior and then let's go through this again. Next, next, and then save it. And then it'll have these uh, items set up. So I'm going to say continue. It goes through our little uh, setting here for how to be using these items. I'm going to close this out. You might want to look at that if you're working with the practice file, then how often you file your taxes. So now when you're setting up the taxes, then the first thing you need to know is, well, what agencies do I need to set up the taxes, which will be dependent on generally by location. And then you got to think, well, what's going to happen when I have the sales tax, I'm going to make a sale and then I'm going to have to collect the tax from the customer. Now note how the sales tax works here. The tax is a tax on the person that's buying the goods, generally the goods, because we're usually not taxed on the services. Uh, and we are just the tax collector. So they forced us, the government has forced us, the business owner to be their tax collector. So in theory, the tax is not imposed on the business, it's imposed on the purchaser. And we are now the agent that's going to be collecting the tax. So how's that going to work? I'm going to collect the tax and then I'm going to have a payable and I'm going to have to pay it at some future point in the future. So then the question is, well, when do I have to actually pay the tax because I'm going to collect it? How often do I have to then pay it out to the the government? Now, you, you've got different laws depending on where you're located and they may differ. Notice that usually the general idea would be that if you have lower amounts of sales, the governments are more likely to say, hey, look, maybe we're just going to allow you to file annually because we're not too worried about you given the sales tax, you can just do it, you know, annually or semi annually. If you have more sales quarterly or else we want to have it monthly. So I'm just going to pick one here randomly. I'm just going to pick monthly here, but you're going to have to set up whatever would be correct for your location. I'm going to do monthly for all of them. If you have multiple places as you're subject to sales tax, then the rules could differ, you know, with a multiple different locations. 
So there's this, now we've got this kind of sales tax center. So I'm in the tax tab, we've got the sales tax and we've got the 1099s. We're on the sales tax side. This would be similar kind of process for usage taxes and, and whatnot possibly, but in the United States, we're talking the sales tax. And then you've got your little recap down here uh, on how much would be owed. And then when we owe the money, we're gonna have to process the payment, uh, which, would, which would be basically a check form but it would be another kind of special check form because we're using the sales tax widget to process the payment. We can always go back up to the sales tax settings up top if we need to make any changes to the settings. If we have to add a new agency, we can add a new agency. And if we have uh, custom rates that we need to add, we can go to the custom rates down below. I'm gonna go back to the sales tax center. And then we've got the economic uh, nexus. So all states have rules about collecting sales tax from out of state businesses. So sales tax can get somewhat complex when we start to be talking about like different types of locations. So you can get into some of the some of the weeds here if you're in a more complex situation about the sales tax. I'm not going to do that right now. We're going to go through basically the basics of it, but hopefully that'll help guide you through any more difficulties with relation to it. You've got your reports, which you can also find in the uh, report center you got the tax liability report the tax customer report and the non-taxable transaction uh, review information so this is where you would go now on the taxes area to kind of sort through and process with the payment or how much is owed on the taxes the next thing we need to set up once we have the rates set up would be the items that we're selling inventory items which of those are subject to taxes so then I'm gonna go, okay, that's gonna be in the sales area, which is gonna be up top, sales center. And we're looking products and services, which you might know as items that we're gonna sell, another term often used. And you can see down here, we have the items that are service items, not likely subject to tax. So if I edit this item, for example, and I was to scroll down, uh, we don't, we've got the tax, the taxable standard rate uh, edit sales tax. So I think this is basically saying that's going to help us to determine whether or not tax is going to be applied to this particular item automatically. If I go down to an inventory item, we're going to, let's go down to like this one. You would think sales tax would be subject to it. If I edit that one, we're going to go down to taxable standard rate. So if I edit the sales tax, we go through the little widget what kind of product or service is this? So tell us what it is and we'll make sure the correct tax rules apply uh, anywhere. So we can go through here. Once again, QuickBooks is trying to kind of automate the process to be able for us to enter the data and then QuickBooks will derive kind of the rules that will apply uh, to the data that we're entering to pick the proper sales tax. So we can browse through the items to pick the proper uh, item, whether it's taxable or not. Down here, it says it's taxable based on a uh, location only. So we could select that item and then I'm going to say done. So tax is going to be applied to it. So now we've got this particular item subject to sales tax. So when I then create an invoice on the sales side, I make an invoice here or a sales receipt or an invoice. Then when I choose that item, QuickBooks will hopefully apply the proper tax. But We've got one other thing to think about in this process, that being the customer. So if I go into the sales center, which I'm already at, I go into a customer here and I open up a particular customer, for example, and let's edit that customer and just check out the customer layout with regards to the sales tax. So I'm going to scroll down to the tax information. And notice down here, it's got the tax is uh, exempt. So this customer is exempt from taxes. So what that would basically mean is if we're going to make an invoice for this particular customer and we choose an item that generally is subject to sales tax due to the item telling the system, this will kind of override it for this particular customer, possibly because this customer isn't the end user. So otherwise you could take that, that amount off and then the default is based on location. So now it's gonna apply the sales tax uh, based on location. If I hit the drop down, we've got also our sales tax options manually in essence here as well. So I could select which sales tax option to apply. 
So let's close this back out and test one out here, for example. I'm gonna say, do you want to leave without saving? I'm gonna say yes. And I'm gonna say, okay, let's go and make an invoice now. So I'm gonna say new, let's make an invoice. And let's say that, let's just make a new customer again, AAA for the customer. And then I'm just, that's all I'm gonna do is set that up. I'm gonna close that or save it and no email address. I'm just gonna create an invoice terms net 30. That's good for the current date. It's due in 30 days. I'm not gonna put any tags on it. Let's create an item as we go. So I'm gonna make it an inventory item, inventory item. I'm just gonna call it inventory item one. I'm gonna copy that. No SKU, uh, no category here. The quantity on hand I'm gonna say is zero. As of date, I'm just gonna say the beginning of the month. Reorder point is zero. The inventory account is the account that will be affected when we purchase these items. And the description I'm gonna put here. And we're gonna say that the sales price, actually I'm gonna put a quantity on hand so that we could sell some of them. Let's say there's 10 on hand here. So that'll make a transaction to put it on on hand, which you wouldn't normally do unless it's like the first time you're entering into the system. But this will help us to have something there that we could sell. So then we're gonna say the sales price is gonna be, let's say 250 is what we did before, I think. It's gonna to go to the sales product income when we make the invoice. And then here's where our focus is, where we have, it says the taxable standard rate. So if we were to edit this item, we have, uh, once again, our information here, alcoholic beverage, uh, in-person training, and then down here, is, is it taxable or is it a non-taxable item? So in essence, we're just gonna say it's gonna be a taxable item. We'll have it based on uh, location, done. So it should apply the tax. And then down here with the cost, I'm gonna say is 100, let's say cost of goods sold, the expense account when we sell it, the vendor uh, we're gonna say is, we'll just keep it, we'll just keep it blank on the vendor. So let's save it and close it. Okay, so let's say we sell like three of those. So now 250 uh, times three, we got the 750. And then it applied the sales tax down here uh, at the 7125. So if I hit the drop down. It's based on location. We could choose the manual items of, you know, California or the other here. And there we have it. So now let's see what would happen if I remove this one. I'm going to I'm going to take this one out and then let's add an item that's not that does not have inventory or taxes applied to it. So let's just pick like a service item, for example. So I'm going to say add a new item and let's say that it's going to be a service item and I'm just gonna call it service item one. And then it's not gonna have anything here. Category, no uh, description, sales price. Let's make it, you know, whatever, $300. Income account is services. And then the taxable, I'm gonna edit the tax item here and say that this is gonna be non-taxable. So we're gonna say that this is a non-taxable item and uh, done here. So there we have it. So I'm going to say save and close. And so now you can see in our sales tax item, we don't have any tax that is being applied to this one. Right. So it doesn't have any tax. You could go here and you could turn the tax on, but by default, it shouldn't have the tax on. So let's close this one out without recording it. I'm going to say let's close this out and then let's go into our customers here into our customers. And let's go into that AAA customer. And then let's say that we edit that. And we're going to say that now they're exempt from taxes, right? We can go down here and say, or we can change the, the location. So let's first say, well, what if they were uh, this, this customer's tax exempt because whatever charitable organization or something, and then we'll save it. So now if I make another invoice, I'm going to say another invoice. And we're going to say this is going to go to AAA again, which is that customer that we chose. And we'll select the inventory item that we set up, which was INV1. 
And so now, even though the item is subject to tax, and you can see it here because it's checked off, we don't have the tax calculation below because the customer is not subject to tax. So if you enter something, you're saying, hey, there's something that should be taxed, but it's not being applied, possibly the check the customer. Let's close that back out before without recording it and then go to the customer again. Let's edit it again. And then we might say, okay, let's try one other one, unchecking that. And let's say, instead of based on location, I'm gonna say that this customer is taxed at the California 8% rate automatically. So let's just save that. And so now if I go to new and I go to invoice and then I say AAA here, I say AAA, then <laughs> why are you saying AAA? Okay, so then if I'm gonna go down here, this is gonna be inventory item one. So we're gonna say inventory INV1. There we have it. And we'll say the quantity, let's say is three. So now it's being uh, taxed again because the customer's back on is taxable and it's applying the rate as the California rate. We could change it, but the default didn't go to based on location, but went to the California rate. Now, what does this do when we record the invoice? We'll talk about an invoice more later, but it's a fairly complex transaction. Notice how easy the data input was, but the transaction invoice is gonna increase accounts receivable because it's an invoice. The other side is gonna go to sales, but only for the amount we charge, in this case, 750. And then the difference between the 750 and the 880 that we're gonna collect on it once we receive the payment is the sales tax, uh, which is gonna be the 60 in this case, which is gonna go to a payable account. It's gonna be increase in the payable account. Also, because it's an inventory item, we're gonna have a decrease to the inventory. I'm Yeah, decrease to the inventory and we're gonna have a cost of goods sold expense account impacted. But our focus right here is on this tax. So it's gonna be a payable account. What it's not gonna do, it's not gonna be included in income. That means that when we pay it, it's also, we're not gonna have a sales tax expense, which often confuses people. People say, hey, look, I'm paying sales tax. Why can't I deduct it for my taxes for income taxes? Why don't I have an expense for sales tax expense? Because the theory is that you didn't, it's, it's not a tax on you, the business, it's an attacks on the customer. You're just the collection agent. And therefore, when you collect the money, it's not income to you. Therefore, you record income at 750 and not 810. And you put it on the liability as a payable. And then sometime, periodically, whether that be monthly, semi-yearly, or yearly, you've got to pay the amounts that you collected as a collection agent, in essence, to the government. So if I record that, let's check it out let's go ahead and save and close it and just verify that and go to our reports over here and we need to refresh the reports running them again closing the hamburger holding control scrolling up a bit we we know that then the accounts receivable should have gone up so i'm going to go into the ar drilling back down on the accounts receivable scrolling back holding control scrolling back down and we have uh this one sale that was made to AAA, so there it is. Notice it's only record, it's recording the full amount, the A10, including the sales tax. So if I go into that one back to the source document, that's the full amount, not our sales price. It includes the sales tax because we're gonna collect what we charged plus the sales tax. Closing that back out, scrolling back up, back to the balance sheet. The other side goes to the income statement, tab into the right scrolling up, running the report to refresh it, closing the hamburger, holding control, scrolling up. And I don't know which which income account did I assign it to. I, I put it into the, I think I put it down here, sales of product income. Let's go into that one. I think that's it. And then there it is. So there's the inventory. Notice it's going up by only 750. So if I go into that, then there that does not include the sales tax in it. So we have to be in balance from just an accounting standpoint. So where does the other 60 go? It doesn't go on the income statement. It goes to a payable, a liability account. It's because we're gonna collect on it and we owe it to the state. We're gonna have to then pay it back out. It's not on the income statement. So we go back to the balance sheet. I'm gonna hold control, scroll up again, down to the liability section. 
So in the liabilities, where where I got lost. Here are the liabilities. Mastercard. So th these are the payables. So I think it was the board of equalization because it's California. I'm gonna go into that one. And there and so there's the sixty dollars we owe there. And then as we accumulate this money up in our payable account, a liability account, which is the reason we're looking at these items here, we're then at some point going to go to our sales tax manager widget down here in the taxes and, and generate a payment out of here, possibly monthly, mean, meaning after the month that we've collected the sales, we're going to have to pay it the month after or semi-yearly, something like that, or quarterly or at uh, on a yearly basis, depending on the rules of the location. So just a quick recap, sales tax, three things to think about. One, turning the sales tax on, entering all the information you need, including the rates and the locations and whatnot. And then two, making sure that your items, the things you sell are set up properly to apply the proper taxes to the proper item to see whether they're taxable or not. And then three, set up any customers the default setup will be that they're subject to sales tax right but if there's multiple locations for the sales tax that you're subject to then you might have to think about a little bit more detail about the customer which could get more detailed in terms of what a sales tax is going to be applied to them and whether or not they're going to be exempt from sales tax due to them being a charitable organization or them not being the end user or whatever uh, in that scenario. So we'll talk more about setting up the sales tax from scratch in our practice problem in the second half or other course.